Hey guys, this video is a response to the predicted comments regarding my recent video. The video is in the description and the topic is the macro lens versus the wide lens. The comments being that I'm doing this wrong with the wide lens. The extra lock-ons here are pointless and it would be wasting ammo to do it this way since all I'm trying to do is trigger explosions. I think it's important to note that if you're going into missions and you're getting 1400 kills, you're probably not doing anything wrong. I can say that confidently, I'm, I'm, I'm alright here, I'm doing okay for myself in this game. So any of the points that I'm about to make is not to say that the way you play is wrong, especially when we have teammates that have their own proficiencies that can easily take out certain enemy types. Often when I get pushback on builds, it's about a certain enemy type that I'm not even trying to focus on in the first place. No build has to be good at everything. Here I focused on groups, and not single target damage, which is why I'm getting tons of kills with it. Sure, I can use the breach cutter and primary weapon for single target damage if I have to, but it does not have to be my focus at all. So, even though ceiling turrets are far away and hard to destroy, the gunner has extremely good range and damage for those things. The engineer actually has insane single target damage builds as well that completely change the dynamic of your playstyle. Another example is the breach cutter with the fire, because a lot of people said they use that instead. That too is going to add a different dynamic, a whole different situation, right? Because right here, as you can see, it only took one bullet to kill all of those enemies on Hazard 5. So personally, I don't need any fire or anything different on this breach cutter. It kills the enemies with one bullet. And I think that breach cutter had about 16 uh, rounds total. So that works for me. And again, that's a different dynamic on how I'm going to play. So it could be very well that the secondary weapon you use and the way you use it might mean that the macro lens is actually better for you in that case. So keep that in mind as I go through this video and show why the macro lens is not good for me. All right, let's get this started. Let's not make this more complicated than it has to be. The macro lens focuses on this area, not this area. So when people say it's great at singling out a target, they're right, it's made to do that. Nothing about the build in the original video is to focus on a single enemy at all. That's why I didn't take it. The idea is that with less of an area to place locks, it'll be easier to get three locks in a small area as where you could have a bunch of wasted locks on an oppressor or something with the wide lens, and maybe not enough explosions going on where you need them when you need them. So let's put this into practice. So right away I noticed that there's a lot of enemies outside the zone that are unaffected. So it would usually just take longer to get rid of the same amount of enemies. But I also noticed that I couldn't scan larger groups that are spread out at all. So if I have swarmers, shredders, or jellies, none of those enemies are affected by the explosion because they just aren't close enough to the explosion. I also noticed when fighting swarmers on their own, the macro lens was pretty inefficient at wiping them all out since it has such a small or macro area that you're targeting. I would say against swarmers that it was clearly not made for easily scanning them all, no matter how close they are, as where the wide lens can easily scan a spread out group even if they are up close. And since we already know that the Loki doesn't expend extra bullets on an enemy that's already dead, then there's no wasted ammo. I'm just efficiently surviving a lot faster than I would have been able to with a macro lens. I also noticed that the explosion on its own is definitely not going to kill everything. For example, the leftover health on this spitter. So if you have enemies in this range, they're not dying the first time. If only there was a way to do a little bit more damage to a bunch of surrounding enemies before the explosion. So the explosion is more likely to kill them. Oh yeah, the wider lens does that. Alright, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's look at how both of these mods perform against other enemies. When it comes to swarmers, it's kind of no contest. It's, you know, one's designed to kind of be better in that scenario. Even shredders were incredibly hard for me to lock onto. It seems if your enemies are within a macro area, it's great. You can trigger explosions and you can just deal with the other enemies another way. But if the enemies are spread out and you're moving around, it simply doesn't lock onto everything around you or everything efficiently since it's not designed to. You're basically honing in on a small location to trigger the explosion. Now let's compare all of the above and have a large swarm with various enemy types. You can see here that the macro lens is very effective within this area. 
But the wide lens is also effective within that same area, but it's also spreading damage around the explosion, which is important since not all enemies are going to be close enough to the explosion or even have low enough health to die necessarily. So now I'm doing damage to a bunch of enemies in a larger area, lowering their health, and then triggering an explosion to kill a larger group of enemies than if I had only triggered the explosion. Not to mention that you may have to lock on again to other enemies with both versions of this build. So if I'm locking on a second time and the enemy's health is lower, this only helps my cause. Lowering the health of enemies around the explosion is not a waste of ammo. Not only increasing the chances that it will die from the explosion based on the proximity to it, but also setting you up for the second lock on attempt where you're likely going to have to lock on again, especially in this case where there's a warden here. And if you're not convinced, with the wide lens, you can now trigger other explosions further away, so I'm doing multiple explosions. Further increasing the damage radius. Honestly, how is this wrong? Considering I'm doing way more explosions on a larger scale. And on top of all that, any swarmers or single targets are also dying on that first shot. The amount of times I've had to take out a large group of jellies or swarmers is quite often. A single explosion in the middle is just not going to kill them as quickly as targeting all of them at once. Fighting a swarm again with the macro lens was just incredibly difficult for me. Maybe it's great for you, but it's just not designed to, you know, kind of do that. Instead, you're just going to be placing a lot of locks in a very small area as where I can spread out a whole bunch of locks in a larger area and only spend a bullet per swarmer unless I'm, you know, doing an explosion. The concern from the other side of this is that what if I lock onto a group of enemies, but one of my tracers is also locked onto a Praetorian, wasting that ammo as well. Firstly, you can always cancel a lock on if it's not right. I do this often depending on the situation. If I'm not happy with it, I just switch weapons and then go back and try again. And secondly, why is it that damage going to an enemy that I'm literally about to shoot in a couple moments is, an, is a waste? The whole thing with the Praetorians is strange because I would just tear a layer of armor off and kill it pretty quickly like this. I wouldn't really be doing lock-ons like that scenario. Look, anything that has been dealt damage but wasn't in the explosion is just weaker for your next round, which as you can see matters based on the proximity to the explosion in the first place. If I have a bunch of enemies with a little health missing, they are more likely to die on the second round. Everything is relative to the situation you're gonna be in. You may need the electricity combo in some situations, and in others you may need a larger area of damage. It just depends and there's so much that is random in this game. Now we have Wardens. As you can see, I tested this with Wardens with both lenses just for this purpose. Just to show that the explosion on its own isn't always enough without some other damage sources. With the wide lens, I can put damage out everywhere before the explosion happens, increasing the chances that they die from the explosion while also placing multiple explosions. I mention Wardens because if you have a Grunt Guard with a Warden, the electricity combo is your best bet here. So you want to electrocute the enemies first before you start putting in other rounds. In these situations, it's best to just get to three locks, electrocute enemies, so that when you lock on for the second time, all of your rounds will do way more damage. And that's probably why the macro lens seems like the obvious choice here. Especially for like a Mactara Brundle or something, where you can quickly trigger explosions and electricity damage at the same time. Or with the macro lens, you could just target the Warden on its own and just focus on that. And again, that's another reason why people consider this the better option. Look, I get it. I'm not saying it doesn't work well. I'm saying the wide lens can do the same thing. I can also focus on the Warden and also enemies around it at the same time. One explosion in one area versus multiple explosions in a larger area and damage in a larger area. That's really what this comes down to. Another thing is the wording of wasting ammo. It's funny considering if you place a lot of locks in a small area, 
it's actually the macro lens that has a higher chance of wasting ammo since you shoot the rounds first before triggering the explosion because you have a higher chance of stacking locks in that area. Any extra bullets other than the three to trigger the explosion that are within this explosion radius are wasted bullets since there's about to be an explosion. That parasite, for example, didn't need that extra bullet, nor did the enemies that close to the actual explosion. Those bullets should be a little bit further away where enemies are either going to take some damage or no damage at all. My whole point with the swarmers and, you know, jellies and shredders is that when you have those and a group, you can actually kill all of the surrounding enemies with one bullet each and trigger explosions at the same time. This is why with the macro lens, you really should only be locking onto one enemy if you can. Because if you lock onto multiple enemies and trigger multiple explosions, it's a waste of ammo within that zone. Now I'm not saying you're trying to do that, I've read the comments and I understand the build. I know that you're just trying to target a single enemy, trigger the explosion, and then if you need to shoot them again, any other shots will do more damage because of the electricity combo. But with some of the suggested mods in the comments, like lock on speed and macro lens, all you'd be doing is increasing the speed at which you get to full lock on, meaning you're spending a bunch of bullets really quickly in a small area, which also increases the chances of reaching multiple explosions within a small area, which would be wasting ammo versus multiple explosions in a spread out area and other bullets lowering the health of enemies before the explosion if anything i would rather those bullets be somewhere else away from that explosion like the spitter example here just a little bit more damage would have been enough to die from the explosion but i wasn't able to lock onto it because of the macro lens as you can see here Suddenly, extra lock-ons around the explosion isn't such a bad idea, but yet more lock-ons within the explosion is not such a good idea. I know it might only be one shot here or there, and that's not a lot of damage, but that's all that this bitter needed. Not to mention swarmers and other things that aren't, you know, in the main group. I think the main difference is that with the macro lens, you're able to choose the enemy that has three locks. Like you can specifically target the edge of a group or something and trigger the explosion without placing too many locks. And that's why when I talked about in the video, scanning and placing all these locks, people are like, well, what are you doing? That's what I'm trying not to do. You basically try to not place as more locks than necessary and keep repeating the burst fire technique. And it feels like you're a lot more in control than the wide lens because the wide lens or the CCD array add-on is locking onto more things, making it harder to stack on one single enemy. So instead of being able to choose your enemy and like trigger an explosion right there right away, instead of that, I'm just kind of waiting for it to say three or four. And the reason why I don't think that's a bad thing is because all I really need is the explosion. It doesn't really matter to me what enemy it is that is exploding or that I'm targeting. For example, you can kill a small group of swarmers with a single explosion. So when I'm targeting a massive group of various enemies, I just need explosions. I don't really care about what it is that's exploding. When targeting a large group with both versions of this weapon, it's very clear that the wide lens cleans up a larger group much faster. But that's because it's built with that in mind. That's why I have the wide lens and not the macro. I want to be able to target larger groups. But that doesn't mean that the macro lens is worse. It just has a different function. There will be plenty of times that the swarm size and distance is perfect for the macro lens. And there will be times that the swarm size would be better with the wide lens. With either option, you just have to adapt in the situation. Like using tap fire, something I don't want to do, but I might have to do. It's just a matter of choosing the right technique in the right moments. So it's not like if I'm fighting a couple Praetorians, I'm going to scan the whole screen. I'm not going to use the weapon the same way against them. I've seen a lot of strange builds in my time, and I've grown to respect the players out there that use them and still do well when I can't with the same build. That's why, although I'm used to the nuances of this build and I can make it work for me, I have no doubt that people can do the same thing with their versions of the build. I talk about nuance of build a lot in my early Deep Rock Academy series. It can make the difference between being really effective or ineffective with the same build. So continue doing what works for you. There's really no reason to change it if it's working. Just like how this build is working really well for me, and that's why I shared it in the first place. I hope this helps some people out there. I'm not really expecting many views on this. It's simply just better than typing the same paragraph or page or novel in the freaking comments.